Hi and welcome to this Rhino and Grasshopper tutorial. In today's video, we'll be going over how to create this design. Most importantly, we used sub D pipes and I show you how I use it. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so to start, let's go here to Rhino and let's type in units. The units I'll be using is inches, but you can use uh, whatever units. Let's go now to a brand new grasshopper file. First thing we need to do is bring in a point. So we'll go to construct point. Then what I like to do is bring in a point component. This is not necessarily required. I just like starting from here so I can then uh, set one point and then bring it into this one and have everything branch off of this. The next one we're going to do is we're going to move this point up. So we'll plug in the points into the geometry and for the motion, we'll bring in unit Z and for the number, we'll bring in a slider. We can say 120. If you want a custom slider, you can say like one less than 200. And this way you can bring in a custom slider and then we can say at 120. Now let's plug this in. I just turned off that sound because it's probably really annoying. Okay, 120, which technically is 10 feet in inches. Now let's connect those two points. So let's bring in a line. And we'll start from the ground point to this point. Now this is a very basic uh, way if like, if you've never done anything in Rhino or Grasshopper, uh, this is a cool way to just learn how to move a point uh, parametrically. So let's go to 120. Now that we have this line, let's take this point and move it. So I'll go to move. And we'll move this point again. Now what's cool is that this point is tied to that Z vector movement that we did initially. So now what we can do is take this one and move it, but this one we'll use vector. Oh, I was up there. Vector X, Y, Z. This one allows us to plug in more than one. So this one's only in the Z direction. This one we can plug in more than one. So let's plug this one in. And for the next thing, it's let's take this slider. I slide it over here. Hold down Alt to make a quick copy. Now, what I like to do to guide myself as to which way this is going is here is X and here is Z. So we want to move it in the X, Z direction. It's going to be this top one and this bottom one. So for, and I'll actually lower the number here. So let's go to 30 for the X. And for the Z, we'll copy the skin. And we can always change the name of the sliders. Uh, like once we move forward um, but sometimes it's okay to take your time and, and kind of clean them up as you go so let's go on to creating the next line so let's go to line we'll connect this start point to this end point so notice we have these two lines with these the height, initial height being parametric. And also we can move this out in the X and up in the Z, or we can keep it, you know, completely horizontal this way, so. Now, just with this, we can go ahead and use the pipe, multi-pipe. But we only have these two, which is not much, uh, but it'll still do it. Like it'll create a pipe here, which is cool. And it'll create a really cool connection at the corner here. But this is not as impressive as having more curves. So that is what I'm trying to do on this little portion is take this and rotate it around. So let's take that and let's rotate it around 
this center point. So we'll take this line into the geometry and for the point, we'll go to this point that we moved up. And that point goes into the plane. And for the angle, the important thing is to right click on the angle, change, set, um, change it to degrees. And now we can bring in a slider from zero to 120. So we can plug it into that angle and have the top portion rotate this way. Now, what would be really interesting, and I actually have a design uh, similar to this one, is would it be cool if we can rotate this way and then have it also rotate the other way? So the simple way to do that is we can create a relay here and bring in a negative component and hold down shift and you can add a negative rotation creating a new pipe or a new line. So as you can see, we have the ability to do this. Since it's divided by three, we can take three, 360 divided by three and we'll have 120. And so this is the, why, the reason why it started. I went from zero to 120. You can go further, it'll keep going, uh, but this will create the most even distribution between those three points, right? So let's move on and let's turn this into what I was trying to show. So uh, in the store that I have on my site, I do have a light post that I created with a similar system to this one. But this could also be turned into uh, like a column structure for like a for a design for like a trellis or something. So let's go on to let's bring all of these into one component so we don't have to fish around into these. Let's go to a curve. And let's bring in the first one, the second one, and the rotated ones. Now this is the this is uh, one of the reasons why I'm glad I updated to this new version. Let's go to pipe, multi pipe, and let's plug in the curves. Now automatically you're going to have it working with a cool connection here. And I've already worked with this uh, quite a bit, and there's a few things that I like. Uh, there's an equation that I like to use for this, and I'll show you like this. Let's go to a pipe thickness of 3.000. That way I have three decimal points uh, for a little bit more precision. I can plug this into strut size. And notice that by just doing the strut size, we're not getting the connection. The connection is the node size and the end offset. Now, the reason why I have I do an equation is because you'll see that I'll lower this number and then I'll plug in node size and end offset. And I'll raise this number or I'll lower this number. Let's see here. And lower this one so the ratio is if this is one and this is four it's a multiplication so one times four and then if I increase the multiplication the connection will get larger so let me explain it this way uh, maybe I confused you guys a little bit but It'll make sense once I show you. Let's multiply. And we'll do one times four. And we'll plug those into node size. Now, since we have a multiplication, this would be technically a multiplier, right? So let's go to 50. And this will increase the connection and also this will lower the pipe size so this takes care of 
kind of that Y intersection in between, and this takes care of the pipe. So this is why I like to do it like this. Um, I'm sure there's other ways. If you if you figured out other cool ways to play around with the with the sub D pipes, let me know. I would love to learn uh, some more about it. Now, with that being said, we can now go to cap. If you'd like to check out a few more things, I have my website, kapetidev.com, where you could find more YouTube scripts, a way to contact me, courses, and a script store. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.